Yabek. To the average motorist touring in Belgium, the name means little. But to the motorist with a taste for real speed, the name is one of the most famous in Europe. For on this splendid highway, the Yabek Altri Motor Road, the cream of Europe's high-performance cars are put through their paces. And to this road was brought for test the new Triumph sports car. From the Coventry works of standard Triumph, the technicians left by air for the continent. On the drawing board, they had created a car to startle the world by its high performance and astonishingly low cost. This was to be its first test, and managing director Sir John Black was there in person. <laughs> Well, it's very nice of you indeed to come to, to meet me here. And I, uh, I'm very glad to get back, uh, come back to Belgium again. Quite some time, two years, I think, since I met you in uh, Brussels. And uh, but I had been to Ruffin before. Timed runs over the flying mile and kilometer with a target. The friendly Belgian authorities had once again offered complete cooperation, and soon the new sports car was being made ready for its runs against the clock. With speeds around the two mile a minute mark in mind, it's as well to have the tire pressures right, even on the billiard table surface of the motorway. And the Dunlop technicians go about their business. Other preparation was confined to putting the car into speed trim. Neat little aero screen and tonneau cover in place, roof and side screens off. The man at the wheel was to be Ken Richardson, chief test driver to Standard Triumph, who had naturally been closely associated with the development of the car since its conception. As usual at Jarbeck, the tests were conducted under the impartial scrutiny of the Royal Automobile Club of Belgium, whose electrical timing apparatus is a model of scientific accuracy. Theirs would be a factual answer of speeds achieved and in case of any argument, the forces of the law were much in evidence. Meantime, Sir John Black compares notes with his deputy, Mr. Dick. Sir John is a manufacturer with the keenest practical interest in his cars, and to him, the tests to come were a matter of prime importance. As Richardson takes the wheel, he is already completely familiar with the car. Already, of course, this new model has completed many hundreds of testing miles. But a test to the limit of speed in the full glare of international publicity such as this puts an undeniable tension on everyone concerned. Sir John wishes the driver luck, and at last the Triumph sports car gets underway. And now time alone is the enemy. And as the attack upon the fleeting seconds is launched, excitement mounts with the crescendo of the engine note. All along the eight-mile ribbon of dead straight concrete, observers are in their positions. And here's the spectacle they've all been waiting for. A car built for speed and traveling really fast into the measured mile. Now the electrical timing gear clicks into robot life, precise without emotion, concerned merely with figures and not with the thrill of speed. But to those concerned with the creation of this new car, the figures mean too much to be awaited without anxiety. But here's the news, 105 miles an hour for the measured distance. But Richardson reports that one plug lead was loose and the engine was firing only on three cylinders. In a very short time, the car's away again, this time with the engine really chiming on all four. Timed runs in each direction must be made and the official speed recorded is the mean of opposite runs made within a time limit of 20 minutes, so there's no cheating with the wind. And now the timekeepers have news indeed. In speed trim and using the overdrive, the Triumph has attained 125.88 miles an hour. But this is only the first phase of the speed trial. Almost 126 miles an hour when stripped for speed, but what will she do in touring trip? The folding roof is speedily raised, and with the side screens in position, the Triumph is converted from a sleek sports car to the closed-in comfort of a family saloon. After all, it can rain, even when you're in a hurry, and the car is designed for practical motoring as well as all-out speed. 
The conversion is but the work of a few minutes, another practical point, and in gets Richardson for further official runs against the clock. Meantime, the team of hard-working mechanics take time out for refreshment. They are as keen on these tests as anyone, but after all, man must eat. With all weather equipment rigged, the car continues to handle like a thoroughbred. She clings securely to the road at maximum speed and responds to fingertip control upon the wheel. On these runs, tests are made with and without the overdrive, which gives a maximum high gear both for speed and engine economy. After exhaustive tests in all conditions is the detailed schedule of speed trials complete. Sir John Black and his technical director, Mr. Grinham, have watched events from the control van with quiet confidence. Run by run, they have checked the performance of their new car against their expectations. Now comes the final figure of the tests, and Sir John is satisfied. And as Ken Richardson brings the triumph to rest, the full story of the car's performance is told in the official timesheets of the Belgian RAC. In speed trim and using overdrive, over the kilometer, 201.005 kilometers per hour, 124.095 miles an hour for the mile. In touring trim with overdrive, 184.889 kph, 114.213 miles an hour. In touring trim, but without the overdrive gear, 175.353 kilometers, 108.499 miles an hour. Small wonder that the journalists get to work and Basil Cardew of the London Daily Express has a story on his hands. Everyone is keen to get a close-up of the car and to compare notes on its achievement. And Tommy Wisdom, as racing driver and journalist too, is quick to voice his appreciation of the achievement of the car on this, its first showing. With a ratio of performance to price like this car has, it's safe to predict a great future for the new Triumph sports car. <laughs>